setup only costs $1,000. But the really cool thing about it is you get the gaming PC, all the peripherals, and a monitor, which is literally everything you need for a really awesome gaming experience. The best part about it is it's super upgradable, especially the gaming PC, but more on the PC in just a little while. We're gonna focus on the peripherals to start with because there are so many people out there that waste a ton of money on peripherals. And if you've only got $1,000 to spend for everything, you wanna put as much money as possible into the gaming PC. We actually spent $100 on our gaming monitor here, but hear me out. This thing is 4.1 stars on Amazon and it's from a company called Kunpu, Kunpu, something like that. I don't know, but searching for budget monitors, it's a name that I hadn't seen before and it's been popping up a lot. So I wanted to give it a shot. It is a VA panel, which might be a turn off for some of you, but it is 240 Hertz. So for those esports games, our PC will be able to push really close to that and you can take full advantage of the 240 hertz monitor but i'll show you more about that in the performance section now for the mouse pad i'll be honest with you i got the cheapest one i think this is eight bucks it's from glorious i've actually used this mouse pad before in a different setup video but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a mouse pad so that you can get a really good mouse as long as it's decent you'll be okay and this is decent enough for you guys starting out you can always spend a few bucks more and get a thinner mouse pad that probably has a little bit better glide but if you're good it won't make a difference all right so now for the two main attractions starting with the keyboard we only spent $40 on this keyboard it is from attack shark it is a hall effect gaming keyboard with magnetic switches and rapid trigger I'll talk more about the specifics of how to set the actuation points in the performance review of the video but overall I've heard some really good things about this keyboard and I'm really excited to try it out and see how it performs and again I'll tell you more about that in the performance part of the setup. Oh, and it's 60%, but it does come with the arrow keys, which I really, really like. Now, for the gaming mouse, you definitely don't want to cheap out on that because it's going to be how you aim and react to situations if you plan on playing those FPS style shooter games. But you don't want to spend an insane amount of money either. So I went with what I think is a super solid option for only $50. And what you need to look for is something with a really good sensor. And this is the attack. Shark R6. And the reason I picked it up, because this has got a Pixar 3950 Max sensor, which is an insane sensor for a $51 mouse. And in fact, I couldn't find any other mice in this price range with this sort of sensor. So I definitely, out of all the peripherals, spent the most on the mouse. Again, we're trying to maximize how much money we can spend on our gaming PC. Now, this video is not sponsored by Attack Shark because I use keyboard and mouses from Attack Shark. They were just really good bang for bucks. There's a $30 mouse that I use that's not Attack Shark in my $350 setup video that I really like. The sensor's not quite as good, but it's still pretty solid. And there's also some other keyboards from places like Womir and Epo Maker that also fit really good into the same budget for keyboards. Keyboards. But speaking of sponsors, a webcam you could add to this setup is the Ozbot Me 2. And because of Ozbot, we're able to do this entire setup today. Now I didn't include this in the price, but it's gonna be on sale along with a lot of their other webcams for Black Friday. It's an AI powered 4K webcam that comes in three different colors so you can match your vibe. It's super lightweight and can easily be mounted to the top of your computer, which we're gonna be testing later in this video, so that you can easily get into live streaming and content creation without spending a lot of money. It supports 4K 30 FPS or 1080p 60, so you'll have a crisp and vivid picture to provide an awesome experience whether you're doing web calls, streaming, or podcasting. Since this is the Meet 2, they have provided some real improvements, especially in low light situations. As you can see here without my studio lights, it does have a built-in omnidirectional microphone if you need that kind of thing. This thing's not complicated at all, it's literally just plug and play. Ospot also has some other really cool webcams that you should check out. Like me personally, I'm interested in their Tiny lineup, their Tiny 2, their Tiny SE, and their Tiny 2 Lite. All of these cameras are on a gimbal and they have gesture control as well as AI tracking, which means they can track your movement. I'm super interested in trying these out because if they can make this little bitty tiny $130 webcam look so good, then something like a $300 webcam has got to look really, really awesome, right? And actually, all of Ozbot's products are on sale for Black Friday, which is coming up really soon, including the highly cost-effective Meet SE, 
which will have an insane discount and you can check out all their deals at the link in my bio. Now before we get to the gaming PC and actually gaming, we gotta be able to hear what's going on. And we're going with this super affordable option called IEMs. These are the Linsol 7 Hertz Critical Zero Twos. And I've actually been using them for about the last couple of weeks because I wanna know more about audio solutions for you guys. And I really, really like these. I actually got recommended these by a very popular IEM guy on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. B Media, super awesome guy, you should check him out. But these things are only $25, but because we don't have much money for like a microphone, you do have to pay like an extra $3 so that you can get a USB extension and the built-in microphone so that we can actually talk to our teammates. If you've got an extra $30 to $40, you could get a standalone mic, that's totally up to you. If you wanna know what kind I recommend, let me know down in the comments. Now, so far we spent $215 for the keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, and monitor. So that leaves us around $785 for the gaming PC. And that's how we built this gaming PC, which can actually provide you with some insane performance, especially for the price. And it's gonna be super upgradable for the next few years. And I'm gonna have a full dedicated video about how to build this thing and pick out the parts on my channel. If it's not already up there, it will be very soon and you can check it out. But here's the exact parts that we used. For the CPU, we used the Ryzen 5 8400F. Not a super popular CPU, but you can find it on Newegg, really cheap these days. For the motherboard, we got a refurbished B650 from Newegg Openbox for $100. DDR5 RAM, when we bought it and filmed this PC build, we only paid like 90 bucks for the RAM, but the last time I looked, as of recording, probably gonna pay more like 105, so it's gonna be a little bit tougher. But if you're willing to drop down to like 50, 5600 mega transfers per second or something like a CL36, you can probably still stay in that $90 price range. A one terabyte SSD from Patriot, also on Newegg for only $50. And for the power supply, we use the Apivia Prestige C tier for $51. Now the case that we used is actually from a company called Gomdius. It's their Athena M4M. They sponsored a video a couple of videos back and that's why I use this case. This case is like $85, $90. So if you wanna save a few dollars to like counteract the ride and RAM and SSD costs, you could go with a case like from Okinos or something like that for only like 60 bucks and help you save that 25 or 30 dollars that you might have to use to get more RAM. Oh, we also bought like an 18 dollars CPU cooler, forgot about that. And the graphics card, of course, is the RX 9070 XT, the eight gigabyte version. I paid 300 dollars for this, but at the time of recording, there are some that are like 270 dollars. So, again, that's another 30 bucks you can save where you could definitely get in that 785 dollar price range easily to complete this thousand dollar setup. It's great that you can get all this for a thousand dollars, but is it actually any good? Well, let's hop on over to the review section of this video and tell you how you can upgrade it in the future. All right, so I spent a lot of time testing out this setup and just want to give you a performance review of how I think each individual part fares. First of all, let's talk about the monitor. For only a hundred dollars, it's super responsive, 240 hertz. I actually was able to pick up like two dubs uh, with some buddies of mine playing on this. And while streaming and gaming, we were able to get a solid 200 to 240 FPS in Fortnite. Now that's the only game that I tried to stream, just overall benchmarks. At 1440p, you can get some pretty decent numbers if you're willing to use FSR4 and or frame generation. But 1080p is the switch spot on battlefield 6 we were able to get like 100 to 120 ish fps and then when you turn on fsr and frame gen you can get close to 200 fps but 120 is really solid natively super smooth to play battlefield that way and i'm overall really happy with the gaming pc and the monitor as far as the keyboard goes uh the keyboard and the mouse both being from attack shark what i really really like about them besides their overall performance is you don't have to download software to change the dpi or the actuation point you can actually do their web-based software where you can go onto the website select your keyboard select your mouse and you can change the dpi and the actuation point and anything else that you want from the peripherals and do it on the internet so you don't have to have you know 57 pieces of software on your computer which i absolutely love that and overall performance for the keyboard and the mouse was really 
really, really good. I mean, other than the mouse being a little small, and I do have, you know, fat man hands, so the mouse is a little smaller to me, especially compared to like a super light, which I have a white version of the original super light. And, you know, just on the screen here, you can see the super light is much bigger. So for me having a, you know, I would prefer a bigger mouse. So something like the RX1 that I used in the $350 setup is a little bit more inducive to my hand size, but being able to change the polling rate on this and having that extra sensor, just everything was super snappy. And I really, really, really enjoyed, like I, I would not be upset if this was my main PC whatsoever. If you wanna make this gaming setup even better, I would start with the gaming PC. We were able to go AM5 in this budget price range, which means you got plenty of room to upgrade the CPU later on down the line. And this cooler can handle some pretty beefy CPUs, so you won't have to upgrade that. The only thing that might hold you back is the power supply. It's only 600 watts, so there is a chance you might have to replace that if you go too big of an upgrade on your graphics card. You can also throw in an SSD for more storage. It does have one more spot on this particular motherboard for that, or you can use a SATA. But by the time you're ready to upgrade, 600 watts is still gonna be enough for some pretty decent 1440p cards if you play your cards right. Or if you don't wanna have to worry about building a PC twice, you could just go ahead and get something like an 850 watt power supply or a 750 watt power supply right off the bat for only like 20 or 30 bucks more. Of course, if you're not a fan of the VA panel, you could also look at upgrading the monitor. 240 hertz is nice, but a 1440p monitor is the sweet spot for me. I absolutely love gaming in 1440p. I can't really stand a game on anything else these days. So my perspective is skewed in that regard. Even though a lot of people are still playing at 1080p, 1440p is amazing. And when testing this PC, if you go to medium settings, you get about the same amount of FPS as high settings at 1080p. So I think the trade-off is definitely worth it, but again, that's your call and how you might want to upgrade this. But if building a PC scares the crap out of you, you can go check out this video where I walk you through step-by-step -step how to build this specific one.